Hello, I'm Gary Lyon and welcome to Access All Areas. Some big results over round seven and the most eye-opening one occurred yesterday at Eddie Head Stadium with the Gold Coast Suns upsetting the Kangaroos. Damien Barrett, you'd have to say not too many people saw that coming. No, and what it does, guys, it puts a, a really big question mark over North Melbourne's credentials. That The problem this club had in 2013 was losing matches by narrow margins. This year's problem, I would argue, is, is just as big and, and probably even a bigger problem for them given they have had so many high expectations because they've lost bad matches to Essendon, Collingwood and now mm. the Gold Coast. And I, and I don't think we can get a read on, on this team being a top four well, team. Well, you've got to take a stand on them. You can't just jump from one week to to the other. Are you going to stay with them or are you declaring that they're not a contender? They're not a, they're not a top four team. I'm staying uh, with them. As a top four team? I'm staying with them. I still think they've got the ability and they've got to sort it out. They're, they're, they're There's very, worries there, guys. They can't kick goals. No, there is, but their best is good enough. Um, and maybe this Gold Coast side is uh, a little bit further advanced than we think. Well, it is. And they were very good yesterday, weren't they? I mean, this, this side now, guys, mm. I, I believe will turn... Eight and two, but just before we discuss where they are in the big picture, yeah. these are what excited me most. There's a lot of talk about Patton and Boyd and also um, Cameron. Don't worry about Day, Lynch, and Dixon. I mean, this kid Day was a supreme athlete when he was a 17 year old about to be drafted. Unbelievable physical specimen. Yep. I think Lynch is the natural footballer amongst them all, and Charlie Dixon is more your enforcer type. And we got a little glimpse of it yesterday. Six goals between the three of them. A big, big, strong physical presence under the Look roof. Look at this chase, guess. Look at the athleticism. Started from scratch against one of the quickest in the competition. I he's behind I, scratch. He's on the ground. Well, that's right. He's a bit like um, uh, the, the store gift winner. Uh, Boomer Harvey, though, won't make the same mistake again. And this is what happens with these kids. We start to understand just yep. how good they're going to be. Guys, they are now five and two. Mm. I, I reckon they're going to be eight and two. What? By round ten or mm. ten completed matches, yeah. round eleven, they'll be eight and two, and they'll be entrenched in the top four. They're not going to miss the eight now, guys. They might. I'm holding. They're, just cool your no, jets. No, no, no. They're in the eight. Cool your jets. They've won four games against six of the bottom sides mm. in the competition. And they've been gifted the draw from heaven. Exactly. They play St Kilda, Western Bulldogs, Adelaide in the next three weeks. Mm. Perhaps could win those. I think three. you're reinforcing my point. I they, am. But then the test will come, Warrior. Then we'll find out whether. They can sustain it through the course of the year. But their test is going to come when they've already got 12 wins, guys. Well, it may You can lock 12 wins in for this team it, already. No, don't lock them in. You locked in North Melbourne against the Gold Coast yesterday and you've come up with egg on your face. So don't get too far ahead of yourself, Damo. That's your, that's your issue. Uh, because you would have locked in Adelaide against Melbourne, wouldn't I did. you? I did do that. Well, there, you're As arguing, you did too. arguing against yourself. Um, well, I love, there's been some horrible things written about Chris Dawes over the past couple of years, written and said, because he came to Melbourne on a big contract and physically wasn't able to get out there and play. So yeah. to see him have the presence yesterday was fantastic. And, and three weeks ago, everyone was saying what a disgraceful decision Melbourne made by getting Josh Ka uh, not getting Josh Kelly. Mm. Uh, and Dom Tyson and Christian Salem bobbed up. And, and Tyson had 29 touches. Salem's been good the last two weeks. So you've got to be a bit patient with these boys. You throw that first name we just uh, sh showed there, guys, Chris Dawes, with the next guy we want to show you now too, Jack Viney. Mm. It's no coincidence that these two players being in the team have revol has resulted in Melbourne winning its two matches to this Well, point. you've got to wonder, don't you? Uh, St Kilda was just uh, one way or the other in the first round. If they had the presence of the, the forward, but Viney is a leader and uh, was said many times, he's just got uh, Selwood qualities, he's tough, he's in and under. Look at it, he's just a fierce competitor. And to get some continuity into his foot, he's been great. And this other boy we're about to show, yep. Jay Kennedy Harris, uh, I mean, he was a really... Obviously highly rated as an under-18. I think he was a captain of the Mid Met Vic Metro side, but it's got some tricks, Damo. I was surprised at him. I mean, look this goal here, guys. I mean, it's an exquisitely talented footballer. I mean, can he sustain it for the, the duration of 23 Well, he's only a young man, so uh, he's going to get better and better with more experience. So, look, from a Melbourne point of view, you've got some experience at the top end coming back, and you've all of a sudden you've got some 19 and 20-year-old kids that look like they can really play. So that is good news. Hey, yeah, Dale Thomas has now got a, a really big problem for the rest of this year, guys. This is uh, back to Friday night. His first chance to impact this game, and look what he does. And it's not... Well, it's hard to, no, they, they don't make excuses for that. I mean, that's just a $700,000 footballer shanking a ball that you'd see at, at a suburban ground. And look, it, the night couldn't have gone any worse for Dale. By his own admission, he stunk it up, and I'd agree with him wholeheartedly. Physically, to me, he doesn't look like he is in a place where he can play his best foot. He actually, he actually t physically, to me, now looks smaller than he did when he frail. first started back looks in 2005. Frail, doesn't he? I don't know whether he's had a big season in the weight room or not. I know he's had some issues with his feet and all those sorts of things. But look, last week he spoke about 
the fact that he'd been unfairly criticised by the mm. media and that he, he, you know, he spoke as if he'd turned the corner. Well, he hadn't turned the corner. No, he, he played OK. He played OK. He played OK in a couple of close wins. Hey, um, dogs against the, yep. the Bombers, guys. I want you to really uh, take this apart. We've got a, a video package here of, of how they were bombing it in the last quarter when the game was there to be won. Look, we know they've got issues in the forward half of the ground, but as the game wore on, they dominated the footy. They had uh, six more inside 50s, more disposals, more uncontested possession. Couldn't hit up a target. What allowed, are they doing wrong here? Well, allowed Fletcher to be the spare, first of all. And when you've got the spare, you can't do that. You can't just blaze away yep. long into a forward line. But these are good kicks. That's Higgins there. Well, they're not... Yeah, they're horrible kicks. I mean, good I kicks good, as a rule. Yeah, sorry, yeah. a good kick. Look, Williams, I think, was a man who was sent forward to go and engage Fletcher. No urgency to get him. You've got to get the ball back, Warrior. Three and a half minutes on the clock, eight points of margin. Get to Dustin Fletcher. You know they're going to try and burn time off the clock. Yeah. And Tommy Williams just sort of tread water in the middle of the ground. Whose fault is it, the players or the well, coach? Well, on that... From what, on that bit of vision I see there, Williams has been sent forward and didn't get there with any degree of urgency okay. at all. So I, I point the finger at the players. We talked about some good kicks. Mm -hmm. uh, have a look at these from Steve Johnson on, on a wet and windy MCG. This one's against... standard. That's standard. I was on the couch at this stage and I was texting with another Geelong man. And look at this. Into the middle of the ground, wet conditions between two Richmond There's players. There's no percentage on that kick. No. Well, we'll look at this one. Round the corner... Again, into the middle of two Richmond players. He had 13 in the first quarter. I call him a ball pig, Stevie Johnson. He's just He just gets an appetite for the footy, and he was at his absolute best in the first quarter. Joel Selwood wasn't at his best. By the last quarter, he got it done. But, Damo, there's an argument to be said that he shouldn't have been out there. Guess he, he should not have been out there. And how can Brett Deledio look at him there with blood on his face in one instance there, and then watch this happen. He, this is a crucial goal, guys. Yeah. This effectively wins the game for, for the Cats, G given they win by less than a kick. Mm. He has got blood on his face. He goes back to the centre of the ground. The umpire looks at him and mm. just says, I'll just wipe it off, mate. Well, there's two issues. The umpire should have sent him off, but maybe what you're getting is a snapshot into the psyche of the Richmond Footy Club. Yeah, I agree. And the, the ruthlessness yep. is not there because you do whatever it takes to win a game. You get of that footy. guy off the ground. And if Reece, I think it was Reese Conker that was sitting there, should have mm. been screaming at the umpire yep. and just pointing it out saying get him off, get him off, get him off. It's nothing about Joel. It's not being derogatory. You do whatever it takes to win. Maybe you, you got a little insight into the psyche yeah. of that group. Not ruthless enough. Well, umpires probably should have sent, or they should have sent Joel Selwood off, but uh, they got some really dis uh, bad decisions so, mate, on the weekend. When you on this fundamentally rule. change a rule, like the sliding rule, which I agree with in so principle. Let's have a look at this again. That's paid against Cochin, right? So right. maybe you could argue there's yeah, a trip. That's probably a trip, though, yeah. that one. But this one is, is just disgraceful. That's paid two rants. That is Motlop's free every day. So I think that's just a bad decision. Well, it's a young. shocking decision. You can live decision. with a bad you decision. You can't do that. The rules say you can't do that now. No, you can't. And then you've got this one coming up here against Blitzarves. I mean, that's, that's the reason worse. it was bought in. Yeah. That right there is a reason it was bought in. And I, nothing's done on that one? I need just... you to go upstairs and see Wayne Campbell and get an out-and-out an out definition. Because when you change a rule fundamentally, yeah. like they have, you have to get it right. Well, I don't need to go upstairs. They know they're it wrong. wrong. But, um... Well, you are going upstairs because I said two weeks ago that I think you should be the champion of the boundary umpires. I think that's your area. <laughs> now, you need to go and talk to this bloke. I do, don't I? Chris <laughs> Mayne What's he doing? Just sitting there watching the game. And, oh, that could have been an ACL or a PCL. <laughs> he could So, Damo, yep. you're the unofficial ambassador All right, I'll go for up. boundary umpires. So, go sort out. Now, listen. I also want to go up and talk about the fixture, too. Well, we've got six games of footy this weekend, Damo. We've got no momentum into the season. Regardless of what people say, there were still horrible games on the weekend. Two goals and a half, two goals and three quarters, 145-point smashings. And now this weekend, when mm. we want a good fix of footy, what's going to happen? Well, I know it's a national game, but... From a Melbourne perspective, there is one game on the weekend. It's on Saturday night. It's Melbourne versus Western Big Bulldogs. Game. No, it's not. Uh, what? To Breast Cancer Network of Australia Field well, of Women. Sorry, I, I had forgotten that aspect of it. But in terms of the football being right, played, well, there is one game. The, the, Monday, the, the, the next game in Melbourne is a Monday night game, St Kilda Carlton. There's it, no though. momentum in I this season it. with, no. with the, the staggered first round start, the Queen's it. birthday, the Anzac Day. There's no momentum in this season. And it's going to be stopped again. I'm with you on this one. So um, the season's Fluttering, I think. Mm. And right now we're going to come to a weekend of footy and we're going to twiddle our thumbs and maybe go, maybe you're going to find something else to have a look at. So there's a concern. Damien, you've been good. We thank you for once again joining us on Access All Areas. We'll be back next Monday. Have a good week. Goodbye.